topic is the difference between the fundamental quantity and derived quantity. Before I uh, explain the difference between fundamental quantity and derived quantity, I just want to remind you what is the fundamental quantities and the dimensional symbol and the SI unit and the unit symbol. So number one, I give you the dimensional symbol in red. So pay attention. So the length is big L, the time is big T, the mass is big M, the temperature is Q, the current is I, the amount of substance is N, and the luminous intensity is J. Now I'm going to give you the unit symbol by, let's, let's give it to you by blue. So the meter is small M, the second is small S, the kilogram is KG, the Kelvin is small k, ampere is the big A, mole, and the candle. All right, so on the left side, you see the dark is the fundamental quantity. The red represent the dimensional symbol. And then the dark again represent the SI unit. And the blue over there represent the unit symbol. Now I'm going to show you the difference between fundamental quantity and direct quantity is very important so let's pay attention and let's get started with the force uh, because force is the most famous fundamental quantity uh, for physics force is the example of the force there are four fundamental forces in the universe the number one is the gravity the gravity was discovered by Sarah Isaac Newton 1665 Sarah Isaac Newton discovered gravity don't never forget that Number two, uh, these are the example of forces, don't forget that. Number two is, of course, electron magnetic. Uh, it was discovered by Faraday. 1832. Yeah, it was discovered by Faraday. Don't get confused with, I just momentarily got confused it with electric force. Electric force is Electric force was discovered by, by, by Coulomb. So electric force was discovered by Coulomb. But electromagnetic force, which is the fundamental force, because electric force and magnetic force, we combined it through the Maxwell equation. So electromagnetic force was discovered by, by Faraday. Number three, strong. A strong nuclear force discovered like 100 years after the electromagnetic force and it, it was discovered by Chadwick. 1932. And number four, weak nuclear. It was discovered in 1979, the year, the year I was born. Glass how? So these are the example, these are the four example, these are the four example of force. All right, now get back to business and I'm going to show you uh, why the force is derived quantity and not a fundamental quantity. So let's erase this. F is the dimensional symbol. And what is the equation? The equation is MA. And let's write A very nicely. And what should be the, uh, the, the SI unit? SI unit is Newton. And unit symbol um, uh, is M. Now, you probably thinking, when I see MA, what do I see? You actually see one fundamental quantity, and, and this is this one. This is the fundamental quantity, the mass. Acceleration is not a fundamental quantity. There is a monster sitting inside the acceleration. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this. Um, acceleration. There are two types of acceleration, man-made and God-made. Uh, uh, by the way, just keep, keep, keep this in mind. I do not believe in God, but sometimes I have to use the, the concept of God to, uh, to create analogy. So this is an analogy to help you understand something very complicated. Okay, so let's get to here. Acceleration is man-made and God-made. Man-made acceleration, you have a control over it. For example, you are in the car, you hit the gas, you... Uh, uh, you control your acceleration. If you hit the gas faster and faster, your uh, car will accelerate faster and faster. 
God made acceleration, for example, acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meters per second. Alright, that's God made. You have no control over it. If uh, I hold the marker and I let it go, uh, this, this man, it will fall because acceleration due to gravity 9.8. You cannot change it. You have no control over it. The moon acceleration is 1.62 meter per second is squared. You have no control over it. All right, so God made acceleration is something that you have no control over it. You get it. So now you're gonna write, of course, you're gonna write uh, uh, acceleration. Acceleration is velocity over time. So since acceleration is velocity over time, we're gonna replace A by velocity over time. Okay, now what do we see? We see 1 over t, and then we see velocity. We see velocity, so velocity. This velocity is, just like acceleration, velocity can be God-made and man-made. So velocity, just let's, let's make it clear. Velocity, man-made, and God-made. Or right, let's not call it man-made, let's call it women-made. Then why I keep calling it man, women-made? God-made velocity, speed of light. Speed of light. The speed of light is C. There is a constant called C, speed of light. C represents the speed of light. The speed of light by uh, get represented by C. And that is 3 times 10 to 8 meter per second. You get it? So this is uh, a constant. You have no control over it. The speed of light in the vacuum is 3 times 10 to 8. You have no control over it. Nothing can move faster than this speed of light. 3 times 10 to 8. But this is the women made. Women made one, for example, let's go back to the car to give you that same example. So the women made one, you can control it. You are inside the car, you, it's up to you. You can drive 25 miles per hour or you can go above the speed limit. So you get it. So now velocity, so now velocity, velocity is distance over time. So I'm gonna, uh, of course, change it to now one over t and distance over time. All right, now that's it. This, uh, that's it. This is all you can get. For example, let me give you another analogy. What is the prime factorization of 15? Of 15, three times five. If you keep trying all day and all night to get more prime factorization of 15 than five and three, you will not be able to get it because there are none. So, if you try to get more fundamental quantity than this, what you see over here, you won't be able to get it because there are none. So now we're going to get to write the unit, uh, unit symbol. Alright, so now let's write that. So the unit symbol for M is kilogram. Unit symbol for unit symbol for uh, for uh, T is one over second. Unit symbol for D is, of course, uh, meter, and unit symbol for T is second. So, what do we see? We see kilogram meter, kilogram meter over second squared. So, kilogram meter over second squared is a tongue twister. So, there is a name. So, we have to give it a name after Sir Isaac Newton. So, the as a unit is Sir, uh, after Sir Isaac Newton. And the symbol, the unit symbol is, of course, N. So the gravity was the first force to be discovered, 1665, and Newton discovered it. So this is why ooh, the, the physics community gave it after, Sir, after the name of Sir Isaac Newton. Now what do you know? You know that the, the neutron is the SI unit for all the forces. So how many forces, fundamental forces in the universe? Four. Uh, the gravity, what is the SI unit for gravity? Newton. Electromagnetic, what is the SI unit for electromagnetic? Newton. A strong force, what is the SI unit for a strong force? Newton. And weak force, what is the SI unit for weak force? Newton. Okay, now, what is the second most famous equation in physics? So, energy. Energy is the second most famous direct quantity in physics. Dimensional symbol is E. And what is the equation? MC squared. All right, and what is the, the SI unit? Joule. I can write it a little better. All right, now mc squared uh, is uh, one of the equation for energy. There are many more. For example, mc squared 
you have FD. You have many more. You have many more. So I want to show you that mc squared is uh, equal to FD because they both actually the the energy equation. How can I show that? I'm going to break it down to uh, to see how many fundamental quantity made this this mc squared and how many fundamental quantity made this fd because now they don't look same so there is no way i can prove i can i can i can just claim that or hypothesize that they're the same but i have to show that and also i want to show you how many fundamental quantity inside this and how many fundamental quantity inside this so why don't you let uh, get this done uh, of course the fundamental quantity is the mass but c is not the fundamental quantity C is, uh, by the way, I told you that velocity two times we man made and then what did I say? The guard. The guard made one, we call it C. Right? We call it C. And the women made one, we call it, we call it B. The guard, this is C represented by the speed of light. And there is a constant, 3 times 10 raised to the 8 meter. So nothing can move faster than the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Okay, very good. Now, if then velocity, the guard, the, 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 this one is represented by C, C is the velocity, then I can replace C by V. You get it? So that's what I'm going to do. So V squared. And I can write V times V. And I can write d over t, d over t. Okay, now I can of course write it in, I can write the, the unit symbol. The unit symbol for mass is kind of the unit symbol for d is meter, unit symbol for t is second, unit symbol for d is meter, unit symbol for t is second. So what do I get? Kilogram meter square over second square. Now I'm going to show you this is also the same kilogram meter square over second square. Uh, and let's do that. Um, uh, so F, the F is not as a unit, so we have to write F. F is MA and then D. M, D, A is um, velocity over time. M, D, uh, 1 over T, velocity is distance over time. So I have all, yeah, so now I have the fundamental quantities. These are the fundamental quantities. These are the fundamental quantities. These are the fundamental quantities. So what is the SI unit for, uh, the unit symbol for, uh, for mass? Kilogram, unit symbol for uh, dis distance is meter. Unit symbol for uh, distance is meter. Unit symbol for time is second. Unit symbol for time is second. So I get kilogram meter square and second square. So you see that I get same voila. Now one thing you notice that kilogram meter square second square is a tongue twister. So we gotta find a name. We gotta find a name that's easy to say. So the last one we call it Newton. Kilogram meter over second square. That one kilogram meter over second square. If you remember that, kilogram meter over second square. Call it Newton. What are you going to call this one? Uh, is there anyone as famous as Newton? Oh yeah, we decided to call it Joule. He was not as famous as Newton, but he was. Um, he did something. James. James Pascal. Joule. All right, James Pascal Joule. He was an English man, and he uh, made a connection, found a connection between it and mechan uh, mechanical energy.